Okay, today we're going to look at how to get started with the uh, Cisco ASA 5505, which is a uh, firewall that's suitable for small offices or uh, small businesses or remote offices. You're not going to use a 5505 for a large enterprise, but the configuration for the 5505 is uh, very similar to any of the other uh, models you might uh, run into. So uh, it's good activity. Uh, two different ways you can really get in and configure the device. Uh, once is with the uh, CLI, the way we always do with our, our routers and switches and stuff. And here I have uh, that. First thing we should do uh, is get in at the CLI and make sure that the config has what we think it's supposed to have. And in this case, we should have the, the factory default config. So get in and do show run and make sure that your config... Basically, the thing we're going to check is that the IP address is 192.168.1.1 for VLAN 1 and the VLAN 2 is set up to get an IP from DHCP. Uh, if those two things are true, we can feel pretty confident. This has the factory default config, and that's really probably all we're going to do with the command line for now. Um, interesting thing about the default config for the ASA, by default, if you plug it into it to an a location that will give you a DHCP address you can get to the internet with that config that's on there so in theory you could tell people you're a security networking genius and you're gonna set up a firewall for them you could buy them an ASA take it to their office plug it in and leave and it would work so uh, I don't recommend you do that but you could do that um, the other way we can configure it is using a uh, tool a GUI based tool First thing we want to do is connect to the ASA with HTTPS. We're going to get this connection error. We'll go ahead and want to accept that and proceed. It says it's unsafe. And then you're going to want to click on install ADSM launcher. What this is going to do is it's going to download this tool, this uh, program to install the tool. You'll run that and install the, 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 the program, the ADSM program. I've already done that. So I'm going to uh, go launch it from the desktop. Uh, basically when you launch it you want to put the IP address in there leave the username password blank for now I did forget to mention that in the CLI when you type enable and ask for a password just hit enter there's no username password uh, by default hit OK and it's going to tell you that it can't launch the devi device manager and that is because it is a Java based program Java does not think it's secure if you click on the little coffee cup and bring up the Java console you can scroll down be like, oh, hey, Java couldn't trust the server. So basically, with that self-signed certificate error we got, Java doesn't like that. So we're going to fix that. We're not really going to fix it. We're going to make it so Java will leave us alone and let us do what we want to do. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the control panel, click on Java, if I can find it, Java, right? And then Java will let us install a certificate. It says manage certificates here. We can go to manage certificates. We want to put a secure site certificate and we want to import it. Well, where do we get the certificate from? Well, we have to go back to our browser and download the certificate. If you click on the lock, it brings up the information about the certificate. We want to click certificate information, go over to details, hit copy to file, next, there is fine, hit browse, put desktop. I called mine ASA.sir the first time I did it. I would call it ASA1.sir this time just so I have the full uh, demonstration. It was successfully exported, so now we can get rid of this stuff and go back to our import window. So we want to import the secure site, click import, find the cert you just uh, downloaded. You see it's not showing up down here by files of type. Change that to all files. And then you can see your certificate. Open that guy. Hit close. Hit OK. And now it should let us in. Check that out. So we just, we just uh, told Java to stop being a punk and do what we want to do. My favorite thing to do. Get things to work. All right, so once you get in here uh, to the uh, ASDM tool, there's a couple, three different tabs we'll worry about. The home tab shows you this, this dashboard, which can show you some statistics and whatnot about your device, your interfaces, uh, that kind of stuff. There's a firewall dashboard where you can look at some other statistics and whatnot. We're not worried about most of that stuff at this point. Then there's this monitoring tab over here. It shows you some information about uh, operations of your device. Like this shows us our ARP table and ARP entries we have and 
you want if you're doing DHCP, you can go look at some DHCP stuff. All right, we have an address through DHCP, so this tells us about the the outside address we got from DHCP. This can tell us the IPs we've given out via DHCP statistics. There's all kinds of stuff you can look at in here. We're not going to worry too much about that. Where we're going to be spending our time is on the configuration tab. If you look at the configuration tab, there's a bunch of different things you can look at. Your interfaces, uh, routing information, static routes, routing protocols. Uh, you can set up uh, the device's name and password, uh, enable password. We'll probably want to do that uh, if we were putting this in a real environment. Um, down here we click on firewall, it brings up the firewall stuff. We can look at the access rules, NAT rules, a bunch of other stuff. We can set up remote access VPN, site to site VPN, and then we can do some device management activities. You know, add users, change the licensing, set up our DHCP server, or if we wanted to use this as a DHCP relay, we could set that up. DNS servers, that kind of stuff. So that's a, a quick overview. The first thing we're going to want to do is run the startup wizard. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Rich, you hate wizards, you hate GUIs. Why are we running the startup wizard? Well, we've been doing CLI stuff forever. So let's go ahead and do a startup wizard and hope it works. So what we want to do is we want to modify the existing configuration. We're going to change the name if you want. Uh, change the enable password. Actually, go ahead and change the name to your name or something, your domain name you're using for the class. Uh, change the... Uh, Enable password. We don't have an old password, so put something new. Make it a Cisco so that when you forget it, I can get into the device. Actually, I guess I probably should actually do these things since it wouldn't let me do it. So Cisco, Cisco. Rich.lab. Must start and end with a... Oh. We'll call it ASA at rich.lab. Now this, this window makes it seem like you can create a real DMZ. Um, that's not really true with the licensing we have on uh, this particular box. If you had a better license, you could do a traditional DMZ uh, VLAN, but we're not going to do that, so we'll hit do not configure. We'll leave the other two the same. Because in reality, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, at this, uh, so far we have port zero configured for our outside VLAN and everything else for our inside. Oh, I got that backwards. We have port zero configured for our outside VLAN and everything else configured for our inside VLAN. That's fine. Uh, outside address. Right now we're using DACP and getting address from a DACP server. For the lab, we're going to want to switch that over uh, to use a static IP, and I'll give you the IP I want you to use for that, but I'll just put something on there for now. And then I'll use a, uh, I think that's what I use for the mask. Enable the ACP server on the inside interface. We're going to leave that in. We're going to, now for this lab, we're going to turn that off because we're using DACP somewhere else. Um, NAT, we're going to want to use port address translation and use the IP address in the outside interface. So that's going to let our traffic from the inside get to the outside. Specify addresses of hosts which are allowed uh, to access the ASA. So once we get done, we're going to want to be able to manage this. So we probably need to change that. And we need to add a our network, that our, our uh, land, our, our machines are on, which at this point is 10.1.1.0 with a 2020, 20, well, we have two different subnets from that network, but if we put a 24, that'll cover everything. So we'll go ahead and do that. And next. And this basically tells us the summary, and then we'll hit finish, and hopefully it'll finish. We got an error. Hopefully that everything else will still work. You know, the username, don't have one. I did put enable password, does he want that? Yeah, so when asked for you for the username, leave the you leave the username blank and put the enable password that you just changed it to. And I believe that should have done it. So we'll hit cancel. Because we already hit finish. 
Now if we look at the interfaces, we have the uh, new config fig uh, I put on there. We have the new outside interface. Obviously the password changed because it asked me for the password. If we go over to monitoring, well let's not go to monitoring. Apparently my uh, DHCP leases didn't get timed out even though I turned off the DHCP server. But let's go down to device management and see if that got turned off. Yeah, so DHCP is turned off. So that's interesting that my leases didn't get timed out, even though I turned it off. So uh, that's the basic config to get this device up and running on the network. The way we're going to configure things, we need to add uh, one more thing, which is some sort of routing information. Uh, one thing we could do, we could do, uh, we could try to do a routing protocol. We could try to do OSPF or EIGRP since we're using uh, Cisco routers, but we're not going to do that. We're going to set up a static route because I know that's going to work and it'll be easier. So what we want to do for here is we want to route anything for 10.1.1.0 to um, whatever your router interface is, right? So I don't even remember what I said. So you, I gave you some, some type of router interface uh, to use, IP address to use on your router interface. So we're going to want to set a static route that looks something like this. Anything for 10.1.1.0 send to 192.168.243.1. So basically it's saying anything for this network send to your send to your router. And obviously we have the default route pointing to the outside. So anything anything going to the outside will go to the default route. But now that I think about it, I don't think we actually set that. Uh, so let's go to our CLI and look at our, let's see if we can see our routing table from monitoring routing routes yeah so we don't actually have a default route uh, the wizard I guess didn't ask for it or I missed it somehow so let's go ahead and add a default route as well while we're here so we're going to send that to the outside and the uh, syntax for that and actually it, it tried to uh, suggest to me object any. We'll do object any because that basically is what we're looking for. And then I set the IP. Did I set the IP to that one? So we'll, well for now we'll just set this uh, static route to 12.13.14.30. But I'll tell you what to set it to in the lab. So then we'll apply that. And now if we go look at our routing, we have a default route. Static default route. So with this configuration, you should be able to get from your local clients on your LANs out to uh, devices on my network.